a little while ago, a fellow Mustang enthusiast asked me if I could describe how to do deck stick timing. If I remember correctly, he had removed the distributor from his engine and was putting it back in and wanted his ignition timing to be close enough for the car to start up. I described the process in text. And apparently, it was good enough to do the job. It worked. But I felt badly I didn't have a video of the process, so I told him that when the day came I needed to do dead stick timing, I would video record it and explain it. That day has come. While replacing the water pump and thermostat cover on our 73 Mustang with a 302 Windsor in it, I found that many of the bolts holding the water pump in place and the water pump and timing cover housing were in the way of the thermostat cover bolt. In order to get to that without pulling the whole water pump out of the way, because I had to do some more work on that, I faced a prospect of either pulling the distributor out to get this vacuum advanced diaphragm out of the way, removing the vacuum advanced diaphragm without pulling the distributor out, which I've done, but it was more than I wanted to have to do if I could avoid it. And Linda said, well, how about you just loosen the distributor and move it? Okay. It gave me the room I needed. It worked. She probably saved me two hours of time. But now the ignition timing of the engine is off a lot. So I'm going to do dead stick timing on the engine so I can get it within a degree or two once it starts and runs of where it needs to be. Once the engine is running and everything else is working okay, I'll put on the timing light and I'll fine tune it. But what I did, I will point back. Oops. I'll point back here, see if Linda can get a picture of my finger. Probably not. I'm pointing with my fingers to the distributor hold down clamp. Boy, that's tough to see. Let me get some light down there. That's good. And that takes a special wrench called a distributor hold down wrench. And what that does, just so you're aware, it fits down here in a convoluted way to where that bolt is. And now I can turn that bolt, loosen it, tighten it, what I got to do. So I can tighten down the distributor housing location once I have it timed. Now here's a funny thing about ignition timing and valve timing with an overhead cam engine, actually any internal combustion engine I've ever seen running an automobile. The camshaft turns at one half the RPM of the crankshaft. That's because it's a four valve engine. Every other stroke of the engine's piston going up is either compression or it is exhaust stroke. Every downstroke is either the power stroke or the intake stroke. Well, we need to make sure that when we set our timing that the ignition distributor cap rotor is pointed to the ignition wire that goes to cylinder number one. So we know it will fire off on its compression stroke. Now, if you're doing a raw engine build, there's a few ways to make sure you're on the compression stroke and not the exhaust stroke. One is to take out the spark plug, put your finger over the spark plug hole, slowly tap the engine over, crank it at a time, and wait until you feel pressure coming out. You're in the compression stroke. Then you can go on your vibration dampener, also called harmonic balancer, 
It has a small section with a couple of markings on it that show 0 degrees, 10 degrees, and 20 degrees before and after top dead center. And set for 0 degrees, top dead center. In my case, I'll set it for 6 degrees before top dead center because that's what the specs call for anyway. Once that's done, you need to rotate this distributor housing until the ignition points open up because that's what classes electromagnetic field in the ignition coil and fires off 25,000 some odd volts of high voltage energy, electricity, to spark plugs, hence lighting off the ignition. Now in my case, I already knew where the rotor was pointed because I had taken off the distributor cap and took the rotor out. So here's the ignition rotor. I'm going to go ahead and put it in place. And if you take a look, it is pointing that way. So I'll put the cap on. I'm not going to lock it down yet. I want to see how close it is to number one cylinder ignition wire as opposed to its opposing cylinder. one. I'm going to double check. I think I found it. On a Ford engine, number one cylinder is the forward passenger side as opposed to General Motors and Chrysler, which is the driver's side forward. Okay, back here, this is number one. The opposing wire is over here. So what I'm gonna do is have Linda try to get the camera pointed down to where the timing marks are gonna be located on the vibration dampener. I'm gonna see if I can find it. There we go. That's where I'm looking. It's a little bit dirty because the car has been 20,000 miles, original miles on it, but this is always a little difficult to find, even for me. I found it. Let me go ahead and take the camera from Linda and get a gander on that. If you take a look down there, there's a little piece of metal. And near that metal is where I'm gonna be looking for the timing marks. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video for a moment, have Linda come over and get lined up to see what's going on as I tap over the engine. I am not going to be starting the engine up for this next step, but I do need to tap the engine over a little at a time as I try to get the ignition timing marks lined up as close to 6 degrees before top dead center as possible. I do that with a starter relay button. Simply an on-off button, two clips. I come down to the on a Ford starter relay. A lot of people call this a solenoid. It's not. It's a relay. A solenoid is a relay that causes mechanical action to be put on some other device. This doesn't do that. It's simply electromagnetic coil in here. When current is applied to it, it drops down with a copper disc and it closes the connection between the positive cable and the starter motor. It also puts voltage on the ignition bypass wire, so full battery voltage goes to the ignition coil. A lot of folks say that puts 12 volts to the coil. No. During cranking, 
your battery voltage will drop from 12 and a half to 13 and a half volts down to like 9.8 or 10.2 volts, something like that. So it can't send 12 volts. 12 volts isn't there to send, it's full battery voltage. And so once the cranking is over and the keys release, this disengages. You don't need full battery voltage down to the coil. So what you're gonna get is a resistance wire from the ignition switch sending about eight and a half volts to the coil instead of 12 volts. This is by design. The reason I bring it up is I don't want this engine to try to start as I'm trying to crank it over a little at a time. Tap, tap, tap. So I'm going to disconnect this terminal, which is marked often on a Ford as the I for ignition terminal. Take a look, you might see a little the letter I over here is a little letter S. I is for ignition, S is for start. When the ignition key is put in the start or crank position, it applies voltage over to here. And when it does that, it causes this relay to engage and close the circuit, send the current down to the battery and out to the ignition coil. I don't want to have to go in the car and have Linda tell me, getting close, getting close. So I'm going to use this switch to bump this engine over. The first time I do it, I might jump, Linda might jump, because we don't do this very often. But it works nicely. So I'm going to put this light down here so I can see when the ignition timing mark is coming up on the marking plate. I'll know I'm getting close to either cylinder number one, a compression sto stroke, or a opposing cylinder. I suspect it might be the opposing. I say that because the rotor is pointing in kind of this direction. Number one, the ignition wire was over here. The rotation of the distributor is counterclockwise. I know that because the vacuum events diaphragm points in the direction of rotation. So that tells me as I turn the engine over, crank it a little bit, the rotor is going to go further and further away from number one over to here. I have to keep bumping it until it comes back over to where number one position is. Otherwise, I'll be out with my timing and I don't want to do that. So I'll have Linda try to get the camera pointing down here behind the big pulley that is the harmonic balancer or vibration dampener and we'll watch as it cranks over wait this has got no oh we're not going to start no. the engine okay Oh, look at that, That's pink fine. marks. Those pink marks I put in place the other day when the car was up in the air, I could see the vibration dampener very clearly. I marked one of them with a short mark. That is six degrees before top dead center. The longer pink mark, that one is top dead center. So we are about, actually, that's probably pretty close to 8 degrees before top dead center. So now I'll take a look and see which way the rotor is pointing in the distributor. Sure enough, that's not number one, that's pointing down here. Number one is over here. So whatever opposing cylinder number is on a power stroke is 100 degrees, 180 degrees out from where I want it to be. I kind of surmise that would be the case, so it's no big deal. So I'm going to crank this around one more time because even though I could time it from that position, I want to go ahead and do it as correctly as possible. I am not going to be starting the engine up for this next step, but I do need to tap the engine over a little at a time as I try to get the ignition timing marks lined up as close to six degrees before top dead center as possible. I do that with a starter relay button. 
simply an off button two clips I come down to the on a Ford starter relay a lot of people call this a solenoid it's not it's a relay a solenoid is a relay that causes mechanical action to be put on some other device this doesn't do that it's simply an electromagnetic coil in here when current is applied to it it drops down with a copper disc and it closes the connection between the positive cable and the starter motor it also puts voltage on the ignition bypass wire so full battery voltage goes to the ignition coil a lot of folks say that puts 12 volts to the coil no during cranking your battery voltage will drop from 12 and a half to 13 and a half volts down to like 9.8 or 10.2 volts something like that so it can't send 12 volts 12 volts isn't there to send it's full battery voltage and so once the cranking is over and the keys release this disengages you don't need full battery voltage down to the coil so what you're going to get is a resistance wire from the ignition switch sending about eight and a half volts to the coil instead of 12 volts this is a by design the reason i bring it up is i don't want this engine to try to start as i'm trying to crank it over a little at a time tap 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 so i'm going to disconnect this terminal which is marked often on a ford as the i or ignition terminal take a look you might see the little the letter i over here is the little letter s i is for ignition s is for start when the ignition key is put in the start or crank position it applies voltage over to here and when it does that it causes this relay to engage and close the circuit send the current down to battery and out to the ignition coil I don't want to have to go in the car and have Linda tell me, getting close, getting close. So I'm going to use this switch to bump this engine over. The first time I do it, I might jump, Linda might jump, because we don't do this very often. But it works nicely. So I'm going to put this light down here so I can see when the ignition timing mark is coming up on the marking plate. I'll know I'm getting close to either cylinder number one, a compression sto stroke, or a supposing cylinder. I suspect it might be the opposing. I say that because the rotor is pointing in kind of this direction. Number one, the ignition wire was over here. The rotation of the distributor is counterclockwise. I know that because the vacuum events diaphragm points in the direction of rotation. So that tells me as I turn the engine over, crank it a little bit, the rotor is going to go further and further away from number one over to here. I have to keep bumping it until it comes back over to where number one position is. Otherwise, I'll be out with my timing, and I don't want to do that. So I'll have Linda try to get the camera pointing down here behind the big pulley that is the harmonic balancer or vibration dampener and we'll watch as it cranks over wait this has got no oh we're not going to start no. the engine okay Oh, look at that, There's pink marks. Line. Those pink marks I put in place the other day when the car was up in the air, I could see the vibration dampener very clearly. I marked one of them with a short mark. That is six degrees before top dead center. The longer pink mark, that one is top dead center. So we are about, actually, that's probably pretty close to eight degrees before top dead center. So now I'll take a look and see which way the rotor is pointing in the distributor. 
Sure enough, that's not number one, it's pointing down here. Number one is over here. So whatever opposing cylinder number is on a power stroke is 100 degrees, 180 degrees out from where I want it to be. I kind of surmise that would be the case, so it's no big deal. So I'm gonna crank this around one more time because even though I could time it from that position, I want to go ahead and do it as correctly as possible. It's coming up. That's about maybe seven degrees. I'm just a little bit in advance of the six degree before top dead center. A degree or two, even 10 degrees out from where I want to be, the engine will start. Now, I'm gonna take the distributor cap off again, take a look at the position of the rotor, and now it's pointing back to where the number one cylinder position is over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera and walk down the distributor cap. No, I'm not. That was kind of dumb. I need the cap off to do what I'm going to do next. Well, yes and no, I don't necessarily. What I'm going to do is take a test light and I can put it in a couple of different places. I could put it on the ignition coil, negative side of the primary ignition wiring, but this radiator heater hose is in my way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this cap back up out of the way and I'm going to touch my test light down to the positive side of the ignition point uh, connector with ignition turned on run position not running but run position I'm going to rotate that cap and distributor to the points close as I'm touching my test light to where the ignition point positive connector is, when the points are closed, the light should be off. Then I'll start to rotate the cap or the uh, housing clockwise against rotation of the distributor shaft. I'll do that until the light comes on. That is right exactly when the ignition points opened and collapse the magnetic field, electromagnetic field, that would cause the ignition coil to fire off 25,000 some odd volts. At that point, my timing is dead stick timed, but I can lock it down. There's more to it than just that. I'll explain in a few moments, but we're going off camera so I can get set up. I have a test light with the alligator negative ground clipped to the housing of the distributor. Linda has a car in ignition switch run position. The points, I can tell you, are closed. I did that on purpose. I can tell visually they're closed. So when I touch this test light, nothing comes on. So what I want to do, I'm going to try to get this light to hold the distributor cap up out of the way. So you can see what's happening on the video. As I rotate the housing of this distributor against the, the opposite direction of the rotation of the distributor cam, uh, uh, the shaft and cam, this the light will come on as soon as those points open right there. Close, open, closed, open. I'm going back and forth on rotation on distributor housing. Right there is when the ignition coil would be fired because the points opened up, electromagnetic field will have collapsed on a step up transformer design of the ignition coil. Sometimes 16,000 volts, sometimes 25,000, sometimes more, depends on what the system needs. Gets fired off and the rotor points it to spark plug number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the distributor housing lockdown bolt. 
I'm going to check once again to make sure I have current. Well, I don't because when I tightened it down that little tiny bit, it probably moved just enough to close those points. That's okay because the ignition timing on the harmonic balancer is showing about seven or eight degrees anyway. So if it's closed up a little tiny bit, it'll still be pretty close where I want to be. It'll be enough to start the engine. I'll get out the timing light. I'll make my final adjustments after the engine is running and warmed up. But this is going to be more than close enough with dead stick timing to get the engine started. Now, in order for the engine to start, i got to put the rotor back in. And I also want to go ahead and get the sugar cap back in place. I also want to get my drop light out of here. <laughs> it's all tangled up. I'm all hung up. Hold I can't. Up. Linda will get me untangled. Don't pull. Don't pull it. Don't pull it. I'm not. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay, so these rotors can already go in one way. There's a slot at the top of the distributor shaft that mates up with a little detent inside the rotor itself. It can already go in properly one way, and that's it. So that is dead stick timing. I tighten down the distributor hold down bolt enough to keep things in place. I don't make that too too tight because someday I might be the one having to adjust the timing again like I will after I get this engine running. I don't want to make things too difficult on myself. So the cap is in place and now it's time for me to get the cap springs snapped up. So the cap stays in place. This is always fun to do. I can't see it from this side, but I'm going totally by feel. side of the car so I can see what I'm doing. Yep, I'm going to move. I'm going to swap places with Linda. Can I stop this or not? Nope. No? This is one of those things where if there's something that's going to be difficult, I prefer to have folks see it's not just them. It happens to me too. Oh, headlights are on. Oh, that's because the car's a run position. I have a headlight relay. Can I turn it off or not? Nope. Yeah, you can turn the ignition off. Because I'm done with that for right now. Okay, it's in place. Now, a few moments ago, I made a comment. Oh, the headlights are on. I set this car up for a couple of different reasons. So whenever the engine ignition switch is under run or accessory position, the headlights come on. So we have running lights, but I didn't just do it for safety. I use that same circuit to power the backup camera and the sequential flasher circuits for my LED tail lights on this car. That requires 12 volts of switch power. I did in fact running a 12 volt switch power wire from 
the front of the engine back to the trunk. So I cheated and I tapped into the headlamp and parking lamp circuits. So it powers back during the time the headlamps run. I didn't want to be always remembering every time I drove the car, turn the headlamps on or off if I want to use a backup camera and have the sequential flashers working. So I wired this up with a headlamp relay, relay switch, which I needed to do anyway because I put halogen lamps on this car. They pull more power than traditional headlamps, putting more of a load on the headlight switch, and I didn't want to overload the headlight switch's circuit breaker. So for us, it worked out the way we wanted. That's one of the few modifications I've made to this car to make it more livable. The other was electric fans with aluminum radiator and putting in the thermal switch and the fan relay switch just to make this a little bit more modernized without going over the top too, too far. Okay, we're gonna clean up a few things, open the garage door, see if we can get this thing started get it outside, start checking for leaks, and checking for some other things to make sure I didn't break anything along the way. We'll catch you in another clip in just a little bit. 